What's going on everybody, it's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at the all-new Geekcom Ryzen 9 powered A8 mini PC. A couple months ago we actually took a look at their A7 series, which was powered by a Ryzen 7 7000 series APU. But with their new A8 releasing, they did upgrade this APU to Ryzen 8000. In fact, this version has the Ryzen 9 8945HS, which is pretty amazing given the form factor. As you can see, this thing is super sleek. It is constructed of aluminum. And again, these are some of my favorite looking mini PCs right now. I think they're just super clean, very elegant. And just to give you an idea on the size here, it isn't coming in much bigger than an Xbox controller, which is pretty amazing. Inside of the box, along with the A8 mini PC, we're gonna get a mounting bracket. This is just gonna make it really easy to kind of mount it to the back of your monitor. All the hardware we need, plus they've included their brand new small form factor 120 watt power supply. And these are coming in a lot smaller than the older ones, but they're offering just as much power. So we've got the older 120 watt right here, right beside that brand new small form factor one. And yeah, I mean, they've definitely been able to shrink this thing down. So behind the desk or wherever you're gonna place this isn't gonna take up as much room as it used to. Taking a look at the overall IO, up front here on the A8, we've got two full-size USB 3.2 Gen 2 ports and a 3.5 millimeter audio jack. They've also included a full-size SD card reader over here on the left-hand side. And around back, we've got our power input, two full-size HDMI 2.0 ports, 2.5 gigabit ethernet, a single USB 2.0 type A port, another type A USB 3.2 gen two, and two USB C ports. Now the one on the right hand side is actually USB 3.2 gen two type C, but the one on the left hand side is USB four, which runs at up to a 40 gig protocol. So connecting fast storage or even an external GPU is super simple with this setup. I also wanted to give you a look at the internals here and what they've done with this is include some snap-on rubber feet so they kind of fit right in there perfectly. We'll have to get them out. There's four screws there. Then we can actually pull the bottom right off. And just like a lot of these newer mini PCs, we've also got an integrated heat sink underneath. This will be held in with four more screws. And once we pull this up, we can actually access the M.2 NVMe SSD. And from here, the SSD can make contact with this using a thermal pad in turn, extracting a lot of heat from that storage. And you can see we've actually got SODIMM DDR5. This is running in dual channel at 5600 megahertz. And over here, this did come with a pre-installed two terabyte NVMe Gen 4 drive. It's an Acer drive, and we will run a speed test by the end of this video just to see how fast it is. When it comes to the specs of the new Geekcom A8, what we've got here is the AMD Ryzen 9 8945HS, but keep in mind they do offer a Ryzen 7 version here, so to have the Ryzen 7 8845HS. But this is their higher end model. We've got eight cores, 16 threads, a base clock of four gigahertz and a boost up to 5.2, 24 megabytes of cache, and we've got the Radeon 780M RDNA 3i GPU up to 2800 megahertz in this. And since we've got an 8000 series APU, we've got the new Ryzen AI NPU up to 39 tops in total. We can add up to 64 gigabytes of DDR5 at 5600 megahertz in this unit. I've got a 32 gig model here, one M.2 NVMe Gen 4 SSD. This has a two terabyte in it right now. Wi-Fi 6, Bluetooth 5.2, and out of the box, this is running Windows 11 Pro. Moving right into Windows, I did check the BIOS just to see if we could adjust anything, and it's pretty locked down. We can change the boot order, secure boot, things like that, but there's no way to adjust the TDP directly from the BIOS without a modification. And the main thing I really wanted to change here was just the VRAM amount. Now it will automatically allocate it, but from the BIOS I was hoping we could at least take this up to four gigs just to alleviate any kind of launch issues with games that need that extra VRAM just to start up. I haven't run into anything with what I've tested so far, but it would have been really nice just to be able to allocate that. And it does look like this thing is running at up to 54 watts. So we did get a boost up to 60 on the initial startup of uh, CPU-Z here, just run a stress test. Over here with hardware info, you can see it kind of goes back down to 54 and it will stay there pretty steadily. I completely understand that the Ryzen 9 8945HS can definitely boost up much higher than this. I mean, around 80 watts, but we are working with a very small form factor unit here and they've kind of done this just to alleviate any kind of thermal throttling. And even then at up to around 60 watts, 
We can get close to thermal throttling this thing when we're kind of maxing it out using either a benchmark or just stressing that CPU out. But under everyday use case scenarios, web browsing, video playback, even AAA gaming, I haven't seen this thing go over 85 degrees Celsius. And as for web browsing, we've got Wi-Fi 6E built in. I just went over to the Geekcom website. Everything loads up really quickly. Also have 2.5 gigabit ethernet and round back if that's the route you wanna go, but I'm using Wi-Fi here and it's really snappy. The next thing I wanted to take a look at was some 4K video playback from YouTube. So we'll just go right over here and find something. We'll do 4K HDR, just a little uh, 4K demo. From our settings here, what I wanna do is actually go back down to 1440 and then we'll take it up to 4K just to reset the stats for Nerds Counter up in the top left hand corner. But this thing does 4K really well, whether you wanna stream from online services like YouTube, Netflix, HBO, or even native playback from let's say the internal storage or an external hard drive. And even though we're working with that Ryzen 9 APU, right now from the wall, it's plugged into a kilowatt meter. We're not pulling over 12 watts while streaming this from YouTube. So far, really quick little system here, and I kind of expected it would be, given that we've got that 8945HS here, eight cores, 16 threads, all based on Zen 4. Using this as an everyday super small desktop is gonna work for a lot of people out there. Web browsing, 4K video playback, email checking, document editing. You could even get some photo editing and video editing out of the way. I wouldn't go through and try to edit five streams of 4K, but if you've got like a home 4K video that needs to be edited down, you could get it done with the chip here. Now we're gonna be moving over to some benchmarks that I ran. And the first one we have here is Geekbench 6. This thing is coming in with a pretty hefty single and multi-core score, but we could get more out of this Ryzen 9 with a little more wattage. But at that stock TDP, looking at a single core of 2,236, multi 12,394. I also ran a few GPU benchmarks. Here's 3D Mark Fire Strike, 7,360. And recently, 3D Mark was updated with a new benchmark for high-end PCs. I still wanted to run it here. I'm just kind of getting a baseline with this new one. At the time of making this video, this benchmark has only been out for three days. Steel Nomad, 483. And finally, we've got Time Spy with a 3,139. So yeah, performance is keeping up with other systems using the same exact chip here. And the last thing I wanted to do was just check out this SSD speed. I've got that one terabyte drive from the factory. And remember, it's an Acer drive, but this thing is actually really fast. It's a Gen 4 NVMe coming in at two terabytes and I ran Crystal Disk Mark. It's not the fastest Gen 4 drive on the market, but these are some really good speeds with this mini PC. Now it's time to test out some gaming on this tiny PC. And the first one we have here is Helldivers 2. 1080p low with FSR set to performance. And usually when I test this, we're at 900p with FSR set to balance, but I wanted to see what we could do at 1080. And it's looking really good. I mean, we're over 60, getting an average of 74 FPS, and it's really playable like this. Next up, Spider-Man Remastered, and this one's come a long way since the launch, and I know it's been out for a while, but we've always had struggles on iGPUs. I mean, to get over that 60 mark, but now even at 1080 low, we're seeing averages around 75 FPS on these APUs. Checking out the Shadow of the Tomb Raider benchmark, 1080 low with AMD cast set to 70%. This is exactly what you need to do here if you wanna do 1080 on these APUs. And with it set up like this, we got an average of 69 FPS, nice. I also wanted to test out Fallout 4, and with this, I did have to drop it down to low to just keep over 60. And even when there's tons going on, I've got some nukes going right now, it doesn't dip under 60. We're seeing an average of around 73 FPS continuously through this game. I also ran that built-in benchmark with Red Dead 2, 900p, low settings. We had a maximum of 133. Average of 93, but that low was really low, coming in at 10 FPS. Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3, and with this, we're at 1080p, balanced preset, FSR set to balanced, and we're also using AMD's frame gen technology, which we can enable from the settings on these iGPUs in this game. We had an average of 78 FPS, and that low was 63, so we didn't drop under that mark. 
And the final one we tested here was Cyberpunk 2077 1080 Low with FSR set to performance. Now, if I went through and turn everything really down to low, you can get in there and adjust everything. We could probably see it averages around 78 like we usually do with the 780M, but we only got an average of 73 here, and that's because I really didn't go in and just take everything all the way down. Another thing I always like to monitor with these mini PCs is total system power consumption from the wall. So while I'm doing all of my testing, this is plugged into what's known as a kilowatt meter. It'll measure exactly how much power this is pulling. And this isn't just the APU, this is the whole mini PC, everything going on with it. At idle, it's pulling around seven watts, so super low there. 4K video playback from YouTube, up to 12 watts. And average gaming from everything that we've taken a look at in this video, it's pulling 67 watts. So obviously it can get up there. Remember, we've got a 120 watt power supply that's included with this. And in the grand scheme of things, when it comes to these Windows PCs, it's actually a pretty low power consumption unit. Overall, I personally love the look and form factor of these new Geekcom PCs. I mean, they're super compact and we're working with a pretty powerful APU here. Now it would be nice, given that we've got the Ryzen 9 in this version here, to be able to take that TDP up a bit more, but I think we're kind of limited by the cooling system. Again, you can see this thing is really small. It's not coming in much bigger than an Xbox controller. But given the size here, I think we're seeing some really good performance out of the AA. Now, if you're interested in learning a little more about this, I will leave some links in the description. You can head over to Geekcom's official website or you can pick it up on Amazon. But that's going to wrap it up for this look at the Geekcom Ryzen 9 A8. If you've got any questions or you want to see anything else running on this mini PC, just let me know in the comments below. And like always, Thanks for watching.